No, yeah, just meet, meet new people um, and traveling. I've got Germany lined up in three weeks' time as well. So Oh, baby, the, whereabouts? Yeah. Uh, so flying to Munich, watching Bayern Munich, play Augsburg in the Bundesliga. Um, and then, yeah, it's uh, Munich, Stuttgart, Frankfurt, Cologne, Dortmund, Dusseldorf in the space of eight days. So lots of hostels, beers, and sausages. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sounds like your average Saturday night. Yeah, it's um, it's it's good to hear. Like you've been obviously going. You're a big soccer fan, and Man United, Man United in particular. Mm. How would you compare and contrast the atmosphere of like a footy game to these games that you've gone to? Because you've gone to like yes, three different leagues there. Yeah, like it's doesn't compare the um atmosphere that you experience in a game of European or United Kingdom football. United Kingdom isn't in the EU anymore, but like it is nothing like the AFL. I will always say AFL is the best ball sport in the world. Um, most exciting, most action packed. Um, but in terms of the atmosphere, the atmosphere in the AFL, it's so fa- like it is completely family orientated that like the passion gets sucked out of it a bit, I think. Um, which is, yeah, a massive part of why I love football over here is because of the atmosphere. As you know, when you went to Old Trafford to watch United versus Liverpool, it's just like every game that you go to is an experience that you'll never forget. Just like a standard Saturday afternoon league game that these people get to go to every week. It's like it's like a religion for these people. Like They go to church and sing hymns, but the hymns are, you're getting sacked in the morning, in the case of Southampton. Um, so, yeah, uh, the sport... I, I, I enjoy it. It's not for everyone, uh, soccer or football. Um, AFL is definitely more entertaining. Soccer is more skillful, though. I'd say, like, the Premier League, it's the most skillful league of any sport in the world because they are, like, the top 0.1% of the top 1%. So, yeah, hope That's that true. answers your question. Yeah, yeah. I guess, like, from an atmosphere standpoint, that it blew me away. As you said, I went to um, Old Trafford. I was in Manchester. It happened to be that weekend, and Liverpool were playing Man United. So, it's, you know, people might not realise more people watch this game, this, like, home and away fixture, more more people watch that than the Super Bowl, um, mm-hmm. which obviously just passed. And everyone's talking about the Super Bowl. It's, it's hard to get your head around how big of an event it actually scary, was. And I happened to be yeah. in... Exactly. I happened to be in town for it. And uh, yeah, book tickets, it cost me like 500 bucks, but I was yeah. like, you know, screw it. I'm, um, I'm only here once maybe. And uh, the, uh, I just, <laughs> you know, pulled, pulled the trigger and um, it was just an unbelievable experience. Hey, like, so we got there late, I got to the gate and for some reason, because of some protest um, that they were processing blazes the blazers. Yeah. yeah. So for some reason they just shut one gate to the entire stadium and it just happened to be mine. And they did. They said, "Well, you know, we'll let you in at the start of the game." They let us in like fifteen minutes in to the game, and we were all just absolutely fuming. And you know, by the time we got in, it sucked to miss the start of the game. But the the crowd was going nuts, and there was this weird moment where I had to find my seat. And it, it's not not like a really new stadium, so it's kind of cramped. And I was looking around, and the crowd was so loud and so intimidating that I actually felt under pressure when I was trying to find my seat. I was like, fuck, <laughs> fuck. It was a weird yeah. phenomenon where I, like nobody was looking at me, but I, it, because the crowd was so electric and it was so hostile, it, it was, yeah, it was a weird experience. And I eventually found my seat. And th- the thing that struck me as well is how loud the crowd is for the whole 90 minutes. Like mm-hmm. obviously it helped the Man United with winning the game and it was, you know, against their arch rival. But um, the chanting goes for the full 90 minutes. It never stops. Yeah. Because in AFL, you, you, you know, you get stoppages on the wing and, the, and the, it goes pretty quiet and then, you know, roars when there's a goal. And then it chills out. The, the Premier League's mm. different, man. And I, yeah. admit, I know I went to the biggest game in the world, but that struck me. Um, and I, I imagine like you felt fans, similar. Yeah, I feel like the fans are more knowledgeable because, like, the lifestyle over here is a lot different. Like, because the weather's shit a lot of the time, there's obviously, like, a lot of societal unrest over here, which I, I don't really... It doesn't really affect me too much. But, like, football is a lot of people's everything. So they watch every yeah. game. They watch every interview of, like, the players. Like, they are fully up to date. They completely know the football club. They live and breathe it. So they ride every challenge, every touch of the ball. They are, like, so intently watching. Like, when uh, when there's, like, a build-up to a goal, like, if a player's running down the wing, it's like, go on, whip it in. Like, you feel like the crowd... There's, like, a language of football that happens as the game happens. Like, if there's a handball, the whole crowd shouts, handball! It's a bit like holding the ball or whatever, but, like, Mm. I don't know. Like, you can... 
like sense a moment coming just from like the the build up of the atmosphere. Um, true footy, Saka. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it's nuts. Like it is interesting how much more they seem to care about it there. Um, and it's it's just like psychologically you kind of get it. Like as humans, we're kind of drawn to tribalism, right? Mm. We don't really have that anymore. So you, you, football teams are very much a community and. 100%. It's just amazing how much more committed to that they are in the UK. Like for anyone could be the, like the biggest fan here, and and they might think, oh yeah, no, we're we're the same in Australia. You're just really not. Like people yeah. are literally willing to go out and get beaten the shit out of at a game. <laughs> like you see posts on Facebook that get, become memes where players are like, oh people are like, let's meet up at this game, let's have a let's have a brawl or, so, or something like that. <laughs> you just don't see that in AFL. Did um, I tell you about my uh, encounter with the Wolves fan? I don't think so. So, yeah, I went to Southampton vs. Wolves, and I was wearing my Ajax scarf. I'm going to grab it real quick. Give me two seconds. So, I was wearing this, which is Ajax. Wearing this Ajax, same colours as Southampton. And I just, like, had it around my neck, so I was, like, red and white. Wearing a parka, which is, like, sort of a hooliganish uh, fashion. Anyway, we come out the ground. I'm with my homie Archie. Um, we're just talking about the game. It was 2-1. It was a great game. I was, like, smiling. Like, oh, sick. Just been to my first Premier League game. And, like, we were sort of in the same end as the away end. And all these Wolves fans come out. And I'm just, like, looking up, smiling. And this, like, like bloke wearing a Stone Island fucking, um, like, a sweater, I suppose, just, like, comes out. Looks like he's, like, coked up, drunk. He's like, um, are you fucking looking at me, mate? Are you fucking looking at me? Like, gets real aggressive and starts squaring up. And I was really? just smiling. I was like, nah, mate, I'm not looking at you. Are you fucking sure, bruv? I'm like, nah, mate. <laughs> I, I, just, I just, like, uh, sort of de-escalated the situation. And then he just kept singing, we've got Super Lopetegui. And yeah, just walked off. Um, nice. But yeah, you can find conflict so easily <laughs> in a game of English football. Mm. Because, yeah, as I said... There's people that hate their lives, love their football, and live and breathe it. So if they win a game, they're like, yeah, fuck these opposition fans. They're a bunch of mugs. Their team just lost. Or if they lose, they're like, fuck these opposition fans. They just beat us. Now I want to beat them. So yeah, yeah there's de- definitely violence in English football. Um, it used to be a lot worse. I've done a podcast with the hooligan, believe it or not, who was also my uncle. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, good good podcast. Go check that out. Drew Zian. Um, yeah, it's, it's fascinating the psychology behind it because, as you say, like a lot of these people don't have a lot going on in their life because football over there, soccer, is traditionally, you know, a more lower class, lower socioeconomic sport. Working um, class, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Sorry to say lower class. I meant working class. <laughs> um, and, and therefore, you know, the that is their church, like you said. And it, it can be a great thing. Like I've reflected on it in my own life, like how sport can be one of those rare things in life that you literally just feel pure ecstasy. Um, mm-hmm. Like how many things that influences your life um, and don't say drugs uh, that can make <laughs> you feel just like, like an actual natural high like that um, of pure joy. Like there's not very many things um, that can do that. But when you also have the opposite end of the spectrum where people just lose their minds when they lose and mm. want to punch on, it's um, it can be a bit of a dangerous thing. I was going to say exercise. Drewsy's Athlete Academy. Mental strength, <laughs> physical strength. All goes hand in hand. 